Good evening, I'm Sean Floss. Storm hitting our viewing area for most of the day. Our Jeff Noble has been tracking those storms for most of the day. He joins us now live from the First Alert Storm Center with more. Jeff? Sean, since this morning we have had two severe thunderstorm watches and three tornado watches in south central Kentucky. We are now in our third tornado watch. Let's go to next rad Doppler radar. We'll put this into motion for you. We're seeing some strong thunderstorms that are now moving into the eastern parts of Warren County and some of eastern Bowling Green at this time. Some of those producing some small hail, as we have heard for some viewers, and there's that particular storm now that's in parts of Bowling Green and eastern Warren County. Also, a strong thunderstorm over in Logan County and Russellville is dropping some hail there, and we're seeing some uh, other areas of thunderstorms now to the south of Hopkinsville, and back this way around Burksville, and also into Albany over in Cumberland and Clinton County. The general movement of all of this can... here in Kentucky. Again, no warnings, but we do have a tornado watch for a good chunk of the viewing area, and that is now the third one for today. This one's in effect for just about all of the counties, with the exception of Russell and Clinton County, and they're very close to the watch area, so you folks there need to keep an eye out of the skies, too. This tornado watch continues now until 1 o'clock this morning. The possibility of strong uh, thunderstorms, some of those could possibly be severe, some dangerous lightning, and also possibly some gusty winds and, and some small hail. And who knows, they could even produce some tornadoes with little or no notice. So we're still not out of the woods yet. We've got thunder and lightning here at the station right now. We, we'll be back with more on the forecast in just a few minutes. Sean? Okay, Jeff, we'll see you then. You saw in that viewing area there, Grayson County was included for that tornado watch. Authorities there reported three tornadoes touched down in that area today. We have team coverage tonight. We'll begin in the hardest hit area at the Litchfield Industrial Park. This furniture factory took the biggest hit, knocked out completely. Only 11 workers suffered minor injuries, though. A Grayson County Sheriff says they knew the storm was coming. They were working normally, and uh, they had plenty of notice. Uh, actually, we had uh, officers out that were in the tornado on Lilac Road, so we knew exactly where it was the whole time, and people were notified all the way through. One worker was flown to Louisville Hospital with a severe head injury, but Sheriff Hudson says if it wasn't for the alert of authorities, this could have been worse. No way the radio done an excellent job of letting us know that they spotted on Doppler radar. And then we went out there to watch for it come through McDaniels, and you can see it come through McDaniels and on into the northern part of the county. Utility crews estimate some 3,000 customers will be without power throughout the night. Those circuits uh, are down because of broken lines. The rest of the service area is uh, intact, so we're very fortunate with this kind of damage that we only sustain that. And it, I think it's fortunate to have a small town that can pull together like that. The tornado not only damaged some of the businesses in Litchfield, it also cut through several communities. Now, our Scott Lehman got a first-hand look at some of the damage. He joins us live newsroom with more. Scott. Sean, Sunfield residents are without a place to live tonight after the tornado ripped through neighborhoods and homes. We talked to one family just hours after they lost their family house. The Everett family enjoyed their home for 15 years. A tornado took all that away in only a few seconds. Half the floor is over behind us and then half the floor is still there. Raymond Everett was actually inside the house when the twister hit. He was with his wife and daughter in the basement, the only part of the home still standing. We were under all of it, but fortunately it left us a path out so we weren't trapped at any time. Some of Everett's neighbors were lucky. There were only a few trees down at this home, but others lost just as much as Everett did. The tornado ravaged parts of town. This Litchfield truck repair shop was leveled, along with this dentist's office and parts of the Bailey Lumber Yard. Raymond Everett hasn't been in town to see what happened. He's still replaying the disaster in his mind. The house is just rumbling. You hear things breaking and crashing and, and the roaring sound. And, you know, we're just hoping that it didn't get us. Soon, reality sets in, and Everett says it's hard for him to control so many different emotions. It was, it was really a sad moment to, to walk out and see your house tore up, but then you've got to look around and all the people you care about survive, so that's, that's the main thing. Emergency officials are telling people who lost their homes in Litchfield to either go stay with friends or they have shut up a Red Cross shelter at the Grayson County Middle School. Now, we don't really know right now how many homes were damaged or lost, 
but officials are only reporting minor injuries. So that's good news, Sean. Yes, it is. Okay, Scott Lehman live in our newsroom tonight. Thanks. Meanwhile, just to the south of us in Middle Tennessee, two tornadoes touched down this evening. The two tornadoes hit in the Knoxville area, causing damage to area homes and landscape. Heavy rain and high winds are being blamed for 20,000 people who are without electricity. There have been no reports of any serious injuries there. Back here, a 17-year-old Warren County teen accused of attempting to rape a toddler. It'll get me, <laughs> so we just kept running. People who came oh God, that, that channel 11 not coming from in a good. Broken pelvis to debris in their eyes. Nothing like looking, but the hospital staff says many people were still very shaken by the atmosphere. Kind of crossing houses today that, that were half collapsed, and um, that's real scary. And a lot of gas leaks going on, but I've went in fields and searched for trailers that have been blown apart. Official report said the twister was on the ground for only three to four minutes, but some areas to the east. It tore across what appears to be more than 10 miles of Franklin County. It touches down about four miles west of Litchfield, beginning with some huge mess. 